Hi, uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on which time you're located. Thank you for attending the uh, webinar on Cyberproof uh, Talk, Essentials of a Smarter SOC in New Novel, uh, hosted by Terence Combs, uh, Enterprise Security at Microsoft. Hi, Terence. Hey. Uh, we also have Iftikar Hussain, who's a security architect at Microsoft. Hey, Iftikar. Hi, everyone. Hi. Morning, good afternoon. Uh, we have Aman Malhotra, who's uh, the Cybersecurity Solutions Architect at Cyberproof. Yeah, hey, Aman. Hi, guys. And uh, I'm Anand Trivedi. I head the Cyberproof business for India and Australia. Now, before we get started, I'd like to cover a few uh, housekeeping rules. First, if you are listening live and working remotely during this period, don't worry if there's a network connection issue. A recorded version of this conversation will be available using the same URL shortly after we are finished. If you are listening live and have questions, you can type them at any time throughout the presentation. Please use a question mark tab located below the player. Your question will be addressed during the Q&A session towards the end of the talk. There are also some additional resources for you to check out under the attachments tab below the player. You can download these items at any time. And finally, at the end of the talk, please take a moment to rate this conversation and provide any feedback using the Rate This tab below the player. Your feedback is really important to us. All right, uh, take it away, Terence. Thank you so much, Anand. Good day to everyone uh, joining us live here today. Appreciate you taking time out in your busy schedule. Uh, we're going to be talking about the challenges that organizations are facing uh, in today's times as, as they look at their SOC operations or SIM platforms. Most of the customers that we've spoke to recently shared feedback how SIMs have been helping them with better visibility of advanced threats or getting to detect advanced threats quicker, faster, and, 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 and recover from them uh, sooner. However, we're also hearing a lot of challenges that they see as these tools uh, you know, tend to age over a period of time. For example, we're, you know, we're looking at the amount of time taken to run queries or logs or, or for, for the matter, even connecting to cloud applications today is becoming a challenge for these traditional on-prem sims. And to top it all is all about alert fatigue. So we're gonna be discussing a lot about those challenges with our SMEs today. And the current challenge that we have with the pandemic situation has made it even worse for our SOC teams, right? Especially trying to investigate incidents remotely and, and, and recover from situations you know, without being present in their physical offices. So we want to talk to you about these challenges that platforms and our analysts are facing. And you know, we're going to be talking to our SMEs for some guidance around how, uh, if these problems are solvable, how can they solve that? Any uh, suggestions or guidances that they have, and maybe any customer story that they have recently helped resolve these items. So you know, those are the things that we're going to be covering today. Uh, let me hand it over back to our host, and and he will start, uh, you know, asking our SMEs to kind of share their point of views. So back to you, Anand. Uh, thanks, Dan. I, I agree. The same technology has been existing for a while. Uh, we've seen. Uh, in fact, overall cybersecurity maturing over a period. Uh, SIM definitely has had its uh, maturity curve. Like there are many SIMs, including open source SIMs now. There are some established players. Uh, they offer hundreds of out-of-box tools, uh, different connectors, uh, dashboards, reports. So uh, Microsoft announced uh, a Sentinel in February 2019, right? So if the car, uh, I, I would like to start with you. Uh, what was it? Uh, what, what are the challenges that you know Microsoft uh, saw in in the sim that uh, it's trying to solve with Sentinel? Sure, thanks, Anand, and uh, thank you so much, uh, you know, for everyone for joining and you know giving us your time. Uh, before I get started, you know, uh, let me just tell you that sim business for Microsoft is nothing new. You know, we have been doing a similar. Uh, solutions. Uh, we've been develop, developing similar solutions for our customers in the form of uh, log analytics, Azure log analytics, which has been there for some time now. A lot of our customers are users that uh, to to aggregate their logs from various services and then use it to do advanced hunting on those logs and retain it for a very long time. And log analytics itself is based on various other capabilities that we had 
previously in terms of Azure uh, Monitor, OMS, System Center, Operations Manager, and so on. And on the other hand, then there were a lot of uh, innovation that were happening on the Microsoft Threat Protection side, like, for example, Windows Defender ATP, Office 365 ATP, Azure ATP, and so on. So with Sentinel, we thought uh, you know, it would be a gradual progression for Microsoft to basically bring both these subject matters of uh, log aggregation and analytics, and of course, uh, threat intelligence, and then provide security analytics. And that is how Sentinel basically came out of uh, from from the company. Uh, so it's nothing new. It was a gradual progression for us to basically bring uh, you know solution like that to market. In addition, to that we also saw that our our customers are already facing a lot of challenges with their existing SIM. Uh, to be honest, uh, especially in their on-premises environment, um, more often than not, customers have to decide on various uh, factors before they actually start talking about you know, SIMs you know, for their organization. For example, they have to factor in various hardware uh, components, like for example, compute, uh, storage, uh, memory, to be able to uh, factor in the highest EPS count that they will ever get from any of their sources. Some of our CISOs have already committed for various uh, you know, uh, high EPS for their SIM for even multiple years which probably they may not, they might not be able to use it even today uh, you know from the average perspective in addition to that uh, on premises sim had a challenge of communicating or aggregating logs with cloud sources so if you if you are one of those organizations who have embarked on a journey with cloud applications and cloud services traditional sims on premises did not really understand uh, cloud schema and that requires additional investment in terms of time and energy to parse and normalization of that those data points. Uh, then, in terms of automation, there were there were a lot of lack of automation in terms of how a particular incident can be operationalized, uh, can be remediated automatically without actually having to do a manual remediation. Uh, without having an automation or automated environments, you know, it, your organization were facing a challenge to remediate a particular incident in a short span of time. And we have seen our customers, most of our customers were using SIM as a log aggregator and then doing only historical search. It was difficult to do a live threat hunting on a SIM, which is only looking at a short time you know, or short data set. If you can't really look at a large data set uh, you know, of data and then write threat hunting queries on top of it and get efficiently results, it is of no use when you are in the middle of an attack. And if we see uh, our customers today who have been trying to run these kind of queries and these kind of pet hunting on a large data set, always challenged with the low, you know, low compute, always challenged with low memory and so on. So for example, if, a, if, a, if you are one of the SOC analysts who would like to see various anomalous trends of sign-in on a particular application and you would like to do it for a large data set of let's say 30 days or even six months of large data set, it is difficult to get an efficient answer to that query in a matter of seconds or in a matter of minutes. Sometimes that query runs multiple times. I mean, it would take even multiple minutes or sometimes uh, half an hour. Also, problems in terms of uh, you know customization, and there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, sim technologies which exist today, which does not really allow you to do a lot of customization on top of uh, existing log sources, and of course with you know, with reporting and dashboards in how you can customize various hunting queries to correlate things which might not be happening in your on-premise digital estate, but also maybe on the cloud. And organizations typically have faced challenges with these kinds uh, when they are, uh, you know, using, uh, you know, on-premise system. And now, you know, it's like our attackers who are using uh, even cloud resources the way, you know, our customers are using it, they're using cloud to even attack and their, you know, threat vector has increased accordingly. However, if you're still using on-premise SIM, you can't really use you know, cloud technologies like artificial intelligence on your large data set uh, to also beat some of these threat actors who are using cloud so to access to, to you. Uh, and that is where uh, the possibility of writing machine learning models, possibility of writing you know, artificial intelligence, uh, using artificial intelligence to unearth various anomalies that might be happening on your on-premises uh, or in your cloud resources with an existing traditional SIM, which re remains on-premises, will always be a challenge like that. So, Anand, uh, you know, uh, so that's you know some of my comments in terms of what kind of opportunities we saw in the market uh, with our customers struggling with, and that's where Sentinel is trying to you know 
plug that kind of gap. Uh, great, Iftikar. Uh, I, I, you know, the challenges that you mentioned pretty much uh, uh, resonate to me. Uh, you know, the, the conversations that I've had with uh, many CISOs and CIOs. I, I hope to see, uh, you know, how Microsoft is solving them in the latter part of this presentation. But let, let me ask you, right, uh, see, year 2020, we are in year 2020. It's, uh, we, you know, this year is going to go down in history as the uh, year of COVID-19, right? The pandemic, uh, it's, it's shaken the world. It's changed people's lives, uh, at least for now. Now, businesses have seen unprecedented challenges, and it seems that, you know, growth uh, has stalled uh, momentum, momentarily, at least for now, uh, globally. Now, how, how do you see COVID-19 playing a role in the challenges that you just mentioned? Sure. So, so like I said, you know, if, uh, a lot of organizations have invested in these traditional sim, which are not living up to the expectations of today's reality, uh, especially in the times like these when uh, more and more organizations are now adopting cloud workloads and cloud applications and services so that they can keep their business running and uh, still operating at the same pace and same efficiency the way they, it, you know, it was before the COVID times. And as in when organizations are moving to cloud applications like Office 365, you know, SAP, Salesforce.com and so on. And uh, you know, now they're you know, using network solutions like which, are, which are also on the cloud, you know, running on AWS, running on Azure, you know, Google. Uh, now on my system, which is traditionally detecting and, and monitoring on my system infrastructure is kind of lying idle nowadays because there's not much activity happening on on-premises infrastructure anymore. There's no network traffic. Uh, every user is working from home. They're using their own home bandwidth, uh, home internet connections and home computers to, to work on uh, corporate applications, which are not even there in their own data center. So on-premises sims are kind of sitting idle at this time because they are not even getting those uh, those events on-premises. In addition to that, you know, for customers who have already invested and committed for a particular kind of an EPS account for multiple years are not able to uh, leverage that, that amount or leverage that budgeting that they have done so far. So the correlations, because now all threats are happening on to the users who are not sitting within your organization anymore. Uh, the threats are happening to the applications which are not there in your data center anymore. That visibility has completely gone. And, and organizations who have traditionally invested in in these on premises sim which does not which does not have visibility some of of some of these cloud applications and then correlating some of the act activities which might be happening on on premises that visibility has completely gone and that is where organizations are facing huge challenge today especially in the times like these especially in this covid times and we also expect that even going forward you know once you know we are behind covid you know times we will still continue to see you know our organization continue to rely on cloud workloads and cloud applications and services and users are working more flexibly from various other locations that other than just office and corporate uh, data centers uh, these problems uh, i mean this this is going to be new normal and our infrastructure in the form of current SOC investments is not going are definitely not going to be enough so yeah so that's how uh, you know we will uh, see you know this is the new normal is going to basically uh, keep on, uh, you know, helping, uh, keep on going to be opposing a problem with the current stock investment. Great, thanks. Uh, I'd like to actually ask the Cyberproof team uh, and Aman uh, specifically. Uh, we are seeing a lot of challenges with respect to the platform, uh, right? And especially in COVID-19, that gets more amplified. Uh, in terms of SOC teams and SOC analysts, how does that impact them? Uh, what's the you know what's the competition level or challenges they face uh, in dealing with such traditional sim platforms, especially now than ever? Thanks, Sarans. Uh, so, well, uh, operating and SOC generally involves implementing effective and sustainable processes uh, that a team can comfortably maintain and improve over time. But there are a lot of operational challenges that arises due to, uh, you can say, the result of maintaining these good processes. Recently, there has been an explosion in the alerts, which has been generated by the security tools 
as security tool has become more and more sophisticated. Also, organizations nowadays are adopting a zero trust approach to lock collection. So this has only led to an increase in uh, the fatigue levels for uh, the analysts because of the increase in the number of alerts that are being generated. Also, the alerts that are coming in don't have the right maturity of information. The necessary contextual background is missing and it lacks the enrichment from internal and external sources, uh, which might help the analyst to make an informed decision. In fact, cyberproof research shows that 80% of the SOC analyst work involves enrichment. That means this enrichment part is a massive resource drain for the SOC team. Also, uh, in, in large organizations, the issue of alert fatigue is compounded by the lack of standardization across different business units. Uh, the methodologies and processes differ from site to site, from region to region. And when companies are acquired or merged, especially in that case, they bring along with them their own set of technologies and policies. Also, you, uh, also the many of the alerts that come in don't reflect the real problem. The, the rate of false positive is very high. A lot of issues that are being flagged by the SIM or other log management tools don't actually require SOC team's attention, but still the SOC team uh, needs to dig through them and determine which are the real, uh, real threats and which are not. Also, it's now a well-known fact uh, that there is a growing skill gap in the security industry which means it is practically impossible to maintain the human resources that you need for your growing and effective SOC operations. Uh, I have a data around here. So according to Forbes, by 2021, uh, there might be as many as 3.5 million unfilled positions in the cyber security industry. So if you see, this will make it interestingly difficult to find professional with the necessary expertise and with the growing amount of tools and technologies in the market. On the other side of things, we have the technology challenges as well. Well, gone, gone are the days when uh, IT was focused on a bunch of servers and cables. Certainly, the architecture was simple back then, and the data actually sat inside the perimeter of our physical devices and our office. But now, today's SOC, if you see, they are faced by complex challenges that comes along from a continuously changing and continuously evolving act surfaces. They are new. Uh, zero day attacks that we come across day in and day out. Also, if you see, there's a large amount of adoption of cloud containers and serverless networks, which also creates a new series of security issues. Further, this complexity is introduced by the adoption of microservices as well. Although they enable you to design and implement it independently, but they make the process much more difficult. So the SOC team, if you see, are often left in the dark because of this widespread architecture now. The SOC teams are often left in the dark with little idea what is happening across different regions, different organizations, and sometimes uh, even less of an ability to respond when something bad happens. This leads to a very important question, that does our SOC matches our risk appetite that we accounted for? Generally, organizations calculate the risk associated with a cyber attack and based on that, they define a minimum period or the response window, after which the impact of the cyber attack will become exponentially greater. The magnitude of loss associated with any attack is directly related to how long will the SOC team be able to detect and respond. So the speed and agility is very, very important in this case. Also, if your SOC team takes more time than the allocated response window, the business impact is huge, both in terms of monetary loss and the effect it can hand, have on the brand image and the brand equity. Back to you, Terence. All right, Raman. So uh, we're discussing uh, various challenges uh, related to traditional SIM platforms uh, on on-prem, uh, as well as the challenges that our SOC teams are are facing today. Uh, you know, with traditional platforms as well as in the COVID nineteen situation. Uh, but you know, where do we go from here? Uh, what should be the ideal uh, SOC platform or the so-called uh, you know, uh, the theme of today? Right, we're talking about smarter SOC, next-gen SOC. What should you know? What should our clients do or SOC teams do to get out of these problems? And what should the you know the next-gen 
smart song look like? Yeah, thanks, Arjuns. So if you see, uh, to handle this skyrocketing uh, malware and the attacks that are coming through now, uh, so what majority of companies, they have already started building the next gen SOC and that will provide a central place for detecting, diagnosing and remediating this online attacks as well as incorporating new capabilities and technologies. Well, the underlying base, if you see, remains the same. Uh, you have your SOC team, you list down all your asserts, categorized by the severity. Uh, for example, you uh, distinguish the critical assets and the non-critical assets. Along with that, you list down uh, the security tools that you might have, uh, the DLPs, the firewalls, IDS, IPS, etc. Uh, then we have our log collection and the data management layer where we define uh, the processing and the retention rules. Then we deploy the SIM. So SIM is the heart of the SOC, which provides us with the collection, correlation, analytics uh, using the built-in detection rules that we get along with the SIM. So if you see, these are the basic components that we get in the traditional SOC as well. When we start building or start uh, identifying the components of a next gen SOC, we just replace the traditional on-prem SIM uh, with a hybrid or a next gen SIM. And then we incorporate uh, the next gen or the modern day SOC capabilities. So if you see, uh, we have the SOAR that sits over a SIM, uh, which will provide us with the orchestration and automation capabilities. SOAR has use cases and playbooks that will define actions and approaches to be followed for a given attack scenario. It will allow you to integrate real-time threat intel feeds as well so that your team can take a deform, informed decisions. It will, uh, you can also incorporate threat hunting as part of your next-gen SOC where you identify gap in your uh, existing workflows and then fix the detection and uh, response workflows accordingly. Uh, generally, uh, nowadays, uh, a virtual analyst concept has come up uh, there is a virtual analyst which will use the use case and playbooks and run a lot of automation component for you so that your SOC team focuses on the targeted investigations only. SOAR also allows you to integrate all the security technologies at one single place, like the EDR, deception, the vulnerability management. The next, next gen SIMS nowadays, which is coming up, they also provide UEBA capabilities, which is user and entity behavior analytics. What, what it enables is you are able to model the behavior of both humans and machines within a network. And finally, you need to have a di strong digital forensics team and a specialist incident response expert uh, team that can handle and deal with any complex attack that might come across in the future. Uh, back to you, Terence and Anand. Got it. Um, <clears throat> thanks for that. I mean, I think that uh, that is definitely helpful. Uh, so I think uh, Anand and Nifty, uh, from a uh, platform perspective, uh, you know, when we talk about the next gen SOC, the key element Aman mentioned is a part of SIM. Uh, how does Azure Sentinel uh, fit into the space? Sure. So, uh, like we discussed, you know, what kind of different problems that Azure Sentinel was built to actually solve. Let me just go quickly go through, you know, some of these things today. Um, when, we, when we're building Azure Sentinel, it was basically meant to not just, you know, collect logs or detect threats, but also help you investigate right there in the panel itself. Uh, so it has a full-fledged, you, know, uh, you know, investigation panel, and then not just that, but also help you remediate right there itself by writing various uh, automations, uh, various automation in the form of not just workflow automation automation or but also uh, automation of the remediation itself so yes from the from the solution perspective sentinel basically does an end to end uh, comprehensive uh, uh, capabilities uh, from the end, uh, in the soc operations perspective now some of the things that you know that that needs to be noted here it's it's a cloud native solution it's not like some of those uh, sim solution which basically runs on a working machine which you can host on a cloud uh, and still have to worry about you know the storage that you need and and the compute that you need and you know memory that you need on those VMs. It has nothing to do you know of those sort. It is a full fledged cloud, uh, uh, full fledged cloud native solution itself. In addition to that, uh, there is no limit in terms of how many 
uh, number of use cases that you can create for yourself. It is not dependent on computer. It can automatically scale up and scale down depending upon the kind of data set that you're trying to query and hunt different threads from. So for example, if you have multiple uh, queries that you're running on a large data set of let's say one year you can still be able to consume uh, you know, ample amount of compute on Azure without actually having to worry about in you know in, you know beforehand so there's no limit on, on how many number of use cases and number of queries that you can create and be and let it save in the service itself and then you can run it on a large data set it has a seamless integration between your you know, different hybrid environments, you know, environments which are on premises. So it can collect logs from your on premises sources as well, like any other thing that that does. Uh, for example, on premises firewall, you know, Windows servers, Linux servers, applications like IIS, Apache, Tomcat, and so on. So any on premises appliances, devices, or servers or application that you're running, you can still manage and monitor them using Azure Sentinel. On top of that, you can bring your cloud applications directly to Sentinel without actually having to bring their logs on to on-premises. So all your cloud applications and services, which are already running on cloud, uh, you, they can send their logs directly uh, through a cloud-to-cloud -cloud communication into Sentinel itself. And all the data, all the log that you that you push to Sentinel are all searchable, which means that you can keep the data for two years in Sentinel and still be able to search them without you actually move them to a cold storage, which means that you can apply all your analytic rules, your dashboarding, uh, your uh, threat hunting queries in a two year of data set without actually having to worry about storage, without actually having to worry about uh, compute and memory and then you know, reserve them upfront. There's no need to do any of those terms, those terms. And then it's a simple onboarding. You can start slow. You don't have to you know always look for your peak usage whenever uh, that that comes uh, you have to start you can start slow in terms of how many log sources that you ingest how much of data query that you want to query and how much of data that you can retain for a longer period of time so there's no need to upfront commit to a cost of storage memory compute you know data distance that's recovery and so on uh, in sentinel so you can start slow and then obvious and then uh, scale up and scale down as and when your demands increases or decreases in your in the lifetime uh you can create your you know your own queries of course but on top of that sentinel brings a lot of curated queries out of the box itself and there are hundreds of them and there's a strong community which basically drives various threat hunting queries analytic rules dashboarding uh, samples and everything out of the box itself uh, and there's a github community which basically also powers that uh, you know from the back end and then it also allows you to bring your own machine learning framework. So if you have built certain ML frameworks, or ML model for yourself, you can bring them and apply it onto your large data set and use all the compute of the cloud to be able to detect threats much earlier in the life cycle before it can cause major impact. Uh, and then uh, all those things which were which are kind of theoretical or hypothetical in the uh, on-premises environment, like bringing artificial intelligence, now you can actually use artificial intelligence in a cloud stage, uh, at, a, at a cloud scale by using all the uh, AI, all the compute and all the memory. And of course, integration with Microsoft Threat Intelligence. Uh, Microsoft, uh, you know, aggregates a large you know variety of threat intelligence through various sources. Some of our own optics in terms of email data, in terms of operating system telemetry, in terms of uh, credentials that we are custodian of, in in terms of web pages that we scroll, we analyze over 8.5 billion signals per day to basically gather threat intelligence and threat which are there out there. Of course, you get access to that threat intelligence with Sentinel so that we can apply that onto the various data sources that you bring you on to Sentinel and then we can unearth various kind of anomalies through that. In addition to that, you are free to bring your own TI or your own threat intelligence uh, as well. Uh, for if you have subscribed to other premium threat intelligence feed, uh, which could be API based, which could be sticks or taxi based. You are free to bring your own PI as well and work along Microsoft Threat Intelligence and, and detect threats to various uh, logs that you're ingesting. So, yeah, so these are some of the capabilities that some of our customers are really, really liking. And, uh, and they're able to use the SIM and the SOC completely different way uh, than what they were used to running it on an on-premises environment.
back to you, Arun. Uh, great. Thanks. Thanks, Terence. I think uh, what you've explained certainly uh, raises inquisitiveness in me, right? But let's let's look at the security journey of building a SOC. Right? It, it uh, matures over time. You uh, have uh, your entire SOC set up with your environment. You have your connectors built, right? Now, if if uh, me as a customer wants to uh, adopt Sentinel, right? Uh, it it definitely cannot be an overnight decision. I just uh, don't think uh, in my mind. Yeah, I do not cannot emphasize that I would just uh, get rid and overnight have everything into Sentinel, right? And so uh, can can Sentinel coexist with my existing SIM? Uh, how, how what is the Microsoft's plan to uh, ensure that the journey or uh, transition into Sentinel is smooth for its customers? Yes, absolutely, and and that's a great question. And you know, we get this question a lot from some of our customers uh, who are evaluating SIM, and and yet and like you know, many customers they've already invested a quite a lot in their existing SIM technologies and you know on premises, and to a certain extent they are also doing a good job at as far as on premises are concerned. What we are seeing and what we are you know uh, suggesting our customer that you can use Sentinel for their cloud workloads to begin with um, and of course bring some indicators from the on-premises like you know for example your firewalls if your machines are speaking to and uh, you know internet based services or devices which has information like ip addresses domain urls you can bring at least those information onto the cloud and then all your cloud workloads whether it's microsoft office 365 or a third party cloud SaaS like conquer salesforce.com uh, success factor if you're using anything on azure or aws whether in the form of virtual machines, web applications, PaaS services, have these services in just logs into Sentinel and use Sentinel to do all the correlations using the cloud compute without actually having to worry about scalability and then detect threats, everything that is happening in the cloud. And then channelize some of these threats and alerts which is getting detected on the cloud and bring it back to your on-premises. So Sentinel has capability of doing this incident creation and then you can push incidents to your cloud, to your on-premises SIM as well. So that now you can, instead of getting raw logs from each of these cloud service providers to your on-premises SIM and then trying to figure out what to do with it because the schema is not the same as your on-premises log sources and you have to write to you know, sparsers, you have to normalize. There's no need to do any of those things. Now you can actually push a high fidelity alert to your on-premises SIM and then correlate that with what is happening on your on-premises. So for example, if there are a brute force attack which might be happening on let's say Azure or your AWS and you see the same IP address is also showing up on your on-premises SIM, that actually can be done now and in a more efficient way. Instead of you getting raw logs from various of these cloud services onto your on-premises and then to you using your limited or finite cloud or finite computing that you have on premises to do that level of correlation you can do all the correlation on the cloud and then bring only high fidelity alerts to your on premises sim for further correlation with your on premises you know infrastructure and part of the digital estate so yes absolutely uh, sentinel can absolutely coexist with the existing sim uh, whatever that you may be using on your on premises so your existing investments is absolutely preserved but you can now enrich that with you know more enriched alerts coming from sentinel which is anyway protecting your all your cloud workloads so yeah that's uh, you know some of my comments on that right got it Thanks. i think i have a question for aman here at this point in time right uh, in terms of next gen sock uh, we're hearing a lot about uh, soar as a as a you know trend and it's it's been a buzzword for a while even gartner has been talking about it they're saying they're predicting like 30 percent of companies uh, would be using that in the next few years. However, the current number for SOAR deployments is less than 5%. So, I mean, why do you think you know, SOAR is getting uh, more and more popular? How does it fit in? What are the benefits? And you know, Tell us something more about the SOAR platform. Sure, Terence. Uh, so, uh, it's good you referred Gartner because uh, the points that I have are also taken from uh, the Gartner report itself. Uh, I was going through the Gartner report and uh, Gartner specifically mentioned that there has been an increased demand in the SOAR platform because of uh, because of several reasons. So uh, the first is uh, there is huge amount of staff, uh, staff shortage. A lot of clients describe a growing need to automate repeatable tasks 
maybe streamline workflows, orchestrate uh, decision making, therefore resulting in a lean SOC team so that they can respond quickly and uh, can respond with a lean SOC team with automating a lot of workflows. Second is uh, due to the continuous evolution of threats and increase in volume. As, uh, as organization consider uh, threats that destroy data and can result in disclosure of their data or intellectual property and also lead to uh, monetary loss. So they need a rapid, consistent and uh, continuous response with few, fewer manual steps. Next, there is an increase, uh, uh, increase in uh, the volumes of alerts that are coming in. So with that, uh, obviously, uh, tomorrow if you onboard new clients and you make new data centers or uh, new ODCs uh, dedicated to clients and you deploy new assets, new employees, new uh, servers and all those technologies. So the volume will increase. So either you complement it with the increase in the SOC team size or you automate a lot of processes. Plus, you need to improve the triage quality and the speed. So it helps you improve uh, the signal to noise ratio by automating all the repeatable and mundane aspects of an incident investigation. Also, there has been a growing need for centralized view of threat intel. SOAR, what SOAR does is SOAR allows you for a centralized view of all the internal and external data that helps you turn this intelligent feed into actionable items. By uh, This might be the reasons uh, which are contributing to the demand of SOAR. But the main, main key benefit is basically it improves the four parameters that actually reflect the efficiency of your SOC, which is the mean time to detect, mean time to respond, how quickly you are able to detect an incident and respond to that incident, the volume you are able to handle in a given period of time, and the productivity of your SOC team. So SOAR helps you improve all these four parameters. But the important question is, what should security leaders look in a SOAR when they go out and buy a SOAR platform or look for a service uh, along with a SOAR platform? So what should a CISO or a security leader or a CRO look into the SOAR? SOAR actually enables SOC automation, allowing you to automate a lot of workflows. So you need to structure your checklist or check, uh, structure your, uh, you can say the requirements in a, in a much requirement map to the requirement in a much ordered way. So first is which is what is the orchestration capability of the SOAR? Aim here is to converge security orchestration and automation tools, incident, incident response and threat intel data, creating a single solution that is fully integrated with any SIM and any log management system. It should allow you integration to any security tool and any threat intel or any external data feed that you want to bring in, uh, depending on your geopolitical location or, uh, or uh, depending on the industry you are or the compliance or the regulatory uh, compliance you are following. It should have the ability to aggregate all that data, both internal and external data, and help you provide with a better decision making. Also, one of the, one of the most important factor is it should allow you to define what all data you can pull and what all actions you can push to your infrastructure. It should also allow you to define your own customized use cases and digital playbooks. And as rightly Gartner also mentioned, uh, you cannot just purchase a SOAR tool and uh, it's not like a plug and play. So if you purchase a SOAR tool, it will not help you. You need a service around it, which can help you customize use cases and playbooks as per your environment and as per your industry so that you are automatically able to detect and respond to attacks. It should allow you to define your custom reporting and dashboards. So uh, for example, if I am working the SOC team, I might like to see my dashboards and reports in a certain format, whereas a CISO or a CRO or the management or the leadership team uh, might want to see the outcome of the SOAR, uh, SOAR and the SOC in a separate view or in a separate format. So it should allow you to define your own reporting formats and dashboard. And last, but the most important I feel is the service. You can buy any sort platform, but it, it matters is what, uh, how much customization it is able to give you 
how much service around uh, the SOAR platform you are able to get. And it's a journey. You just buy the SOAR platform. And uh, when you try to implement, uh, the first one year, to be honest, is spent in customizing use case, building scenarios, integration, uh, integrating various technologies, and then running it for some time and seeing that, okay, once it matures, then you move to next phase. So the service is very, very important. So uh, let's do one thing. Let's try and build a next gen SOC together using all the components that we have discussed till now. So what do we do? How do we start? So first, we identify all the lock sources and assets and categorize them as per their criticality, which are my critical assets, which are my crown jewels, which are all the other assets which I want to place maybe in high, medium, low, whatever category I want, uh, I want to define for my particular organization. Once this is done, we move to lock correction and management phase where the analysis is done. So in this example, we have taken uh, uh, Microsoft Sentinel and the log Azure log analytics. So I, I guess uh, if the car, if you can uh, cover this point. So yeah, so Azure Sentinel is basically based on uh, Azure log analytics, which has been there for a very long time. And some of you, uh, some of our customers are already using it. So if you're already using it log analytics, you probably already know that it can collect logs from various sources and not just on-premises sources, but also if you have cloud hosted applications, you know, in the form of, you know, Docker's or Kubernetes or containers, uh, virtual machines running on AWS, Azure, you know, Google Cloud, you know, you can bring all the logs directly here. Your cloud applications like ServiceNow, you know, Box, you know, all these applications can also bring the logs directly to Sentinel itself. And then Sentinel brings their AI, threat intelligence, and analytic framework on top of Azure Log Analytics, which allows you to build your SOC and, and you know, and with additional additional various other services like SOAR and all. So back to you, Aman. Thanks, Iftikhar. Uh, so once we have the same up and running, we bring in the orchestration and the automation layer, that is the SOAR platform. In this example, I am considering Cyberproof SOAR platform that we have. Uh, we call it CDC, Cyberproof Defense Center. So I am considering CDC here for this example. So which helps you automate your detection and response activity using all the inbuilt use cases and playbooks it has. SOAR also allows you the integration. Remember the integration was uh, like the most important part, uh, most important advantage that the SOAR offers. So SOAR allows you to integrate with all the IT operation tools such as ServiceNow, Jira, Remedy, many others, as well as a range of third party security tools and external sources all at one single place. This enable you to view and control the entire security operation at a single place on a single screen. What happens after is over, over this, this single pane of glass, this is exposed to the SOC team. The SOC team, whether it's based in India, Israel, uh, UK, US, Singapore, what happens is the SOC team uses this single screen collaborative platform to work together and focus on targeted investigation and decision making. What they do is they are able to pull all the data be it from, for example, ServiceNow or Microsoft ATP uh, Defender or Sentinel directly, they're able to push action. They can create data here. They can query the external sources. They can query maybe uh, tools like uh, CallSales, VirusTotal and all that. They're able to push, pull all data and they're also able to push the actions. So uh, this is uh, an example where we wanted to cover if we go about building a SOC, so when we build the first gen, uh, the next gen SOC, so these are the components that you bring in and you can say how step-by-step step you integrate it. Back to you, Terence. Hey, got it, Amin. Thanks for that. Uh, I have two questions, but the f I'll ask the first one and you, know, you can give it a go. Uh, we, we heard a lot about the R&D center that Cyberproof has in Israel and the amount of innovation that's happening there, right? Can you share some insights about, uh, you know, the innovation that's happening there and, and what are the things the teams are coming up with or, or plan to address all these challenges related to SOC? Right, right. Uh, so, uh, one second. Yeah. Uh, so, if you see, uh, the architecture that we come up with, uh, 
the biggest advantage or you can say the innovative angles that we bring out in our SOAR platform or in this overall uh, architecture that we build for any customer is one, you have a modern day SIM which can be built, which has the ML capability, analytics capability. So any modern day SIM you can bring in and configure to the SOAR platform. You have the use case and the playbook. So we have a use case factory. We have a, a library of uh, playbooks which are already available. Uh, during onboarding phase, you can pick and choose which you want. And then you can also decide which of the new or customized use cases you want to build. Or from the existing lot also, what you want to uh, tailor or what you want to custom uh, customize according to your scenario and your industry. Uh, where you can say where the cyber proof SOAR platform standouts is the automation part. So we have the uh, AI ML bot, which is our virtual analyst, which we call CMO. He runs a lot of activities. So basically CMO is like my L1, uh, L2 analyst who is there. And if I am running the SOC, there are a lot of use cases and playbooks defined. For example, if there's a phishing attack or there's a multiple failed login. So CMO already has this playbooks and use case defined. We will pick it up and maybe complete 80, 90% or maybe 100% of activities, which accordingly how we have defined it in the use case and playbooks. So this virtual analyst actually helps with the automation a lot. Other things that you get is one, you get a single place where you can integrate everything, internal uh, log sources, technology, security tools, ITSM tools, and the external threat intel fields, external, uh, other external sources that you might have. Plus, your SOC team is able to focus on, uh, you can say, the decision-making part, the focus investigation, finding out the real IOCs or the real problem, what's going on in the uh, going on in your technology ecosystem, and maybe uh, do some proactive proactive decision making okay they analyze few trends and maybe build a use case for futuristic part so one of the thing we do is we build futuristic use cases using the mitre attack matrix so we will figure out some uh, you can say patterns and then go back and uh, identify the workflows or the kill chains and everything and then define the use case and playbooks accordingly for a proactive approach back to you terence Awesome, Aman. I, I know CMO looks to be very cool, and you know it goes well with the name of even seeing awesome. more uh, that helps our, you know, our analyst friends, right? So I think um, one last question on this slide is in terms of what's in it for our CSOs and CROs. You know, how does this uh, help them address their requirements? And secondly, for our analyst friends, there's so much of innovation that uh, you know we're discussing on this slide. How does this make their life better? You know, how does this help them be more efficient, get to you know, get to do things faster, quicker, and and free up their time and bandwidth? If you can elaborate a little bit about that. Sure, Terence. So I will take this question in a reverse order. So first, on the analyst stress level that we generally hear of, so we did a research and we actually found out that uh, the automation component in the SOAR that we were able to implement at a lot of places that reduced the initial investigation part uh, which includes like for example uh, going through the false positive doing the initial investigation collecting information internally externally so all this initial investigation part the effort is reduced approximately by 90 to 95 percent from the SOC team so now if that scenario you are able to achieve that scenario so what happens is now if if I am the SOC manager and if I have my team, which is uh, doing, uh, which is handling alerts for me on a daily basis around the clock, so I have an automation component which is taking care of maybe 90, 95 percent of uh, the initial investigation, and then I have a skill a skill set of people uh, with clear roles and responsibility defined who then focus only on focus investigation, decision making, or maybe analyzing future trends and maybe preparing for new zero day attacks using different uh, global scenarios and everything. So uh, the automation reduces the stress level a lot. Plus the team, it gives a satisfaction also what I feel to the team that they are able to uh, contribute to the, uh, to the high value work and they are able to focus more on decision making and targeted investigation. Coming to the second part, 
uh, well, as a security leader or a CISO, what you get is you get a complete transparency and control of your entire SOAR or you can say the security operations that is running. Because you have a SOAR platform, you have a single pane of glass where you can see everything. You can identify, for example, if I am the CISO, I can identify like, for example, me and 10 of my members from my team. We will also get access to the SOAR platform and we can log in on a daily basis, round the clock, anytime. And we can see what's going on step by step, how the team is working, what automations are working, what is the mean time to detect, what is the mean time to respond. So this complete transparency. Plus there are other rules as well, like we can define, uh, for example, if there's a critical incident, automatically uh, the virtual analyst should assign me in that incident so that I, I have control of, okay, how many critical incidents come in and how the team is responding. So it gives a complete transparent view of everything. Plus you are able to detect and respond within, uh, within the response window you have defined, or it gives you input, or you can say a practical input, a realistic input on how you should define your response window. So because it is transparent, you get all, you are able to see everything. You can go back and do and work on your risk register and define the risk accordingly. Back to you, Terence. Great. Um, I know we are, uh, you know, almost closing on the hour. We have some time for questions towards the end. I have just one last question. I know I have a lot of questions today, but just one last question for you. We've heard about, you know, all the good uh, technology stuff and the and the challenges of the current times that the next generation saw solves. Uh, any customers uh, who have been using this in the recent times? Uh, you know, the CyberProof Sentinel platform. Uh, anything that you have to share, uh, you know, how they did it, what was the success story, and, you know, and real live examples of where this thing is running. Yeah. So in the interest of time, I will just speed it up. Uh, so we, I, uh, I will showcase two examples. One is, the, uh, one is from the banking and financial service industry, uh, where we have a big global uh, BFSI client, more than 2 lakh employees spread across 40 countries around the globe. So if you see, they have integrated all their uh, assets from AWS, Azure, and for other SaaS environments, on-prem devices, everything. And they have more than 50,000 devices generating more than 3 TB of data per day. So that is like the size of the logs that are being generated where we have deployed Sentinel and Cyberproof CDC together. And we are able to uh, achieve that level of maturity with them. The second example that I will take is from the transportation sector. They have around 80,000 employees, 10,000 devices on-prem and various other cloud service providers. They are generating massive 5 TB data per day. And there also we have implemented Sentinel and CDC together and we are now uh, almost crossed the first year mark and the SOC is in a mature state where we are trying to uh, move into the proactive detection and uh, response phase now. Back to you, Anand and Terence. Great. Uh, I, I would like to spend the last seven minutes, uh, six to seven minutes that we have uh, taking up our questions that we have from our audience today, right? So the first question is, uh, what does SOAR stand for? Uh, I, I think I'll take that question. Uh, basically, SOAR stands for Security Autom Orchestration, Automation, and Response. It's it's the name given to a technology that uh, aids or, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I would say organizes uh, your SOC operations in a better way. You know, you know the, the team is there to take on uh, the logs, run, give you alerts, right? So now what happens uh, in that uh, once those alerts come up on the screen, uh, it's the technology that helps you automate that, you define playbooks and define steps uh, in a, what should be done in each scenario, uh, right? So that, that's what I would say SOAR is about. Uh, the next question is, uh, does uh, Cyberproof have a SOAR platform? How does it integrate with Sentinel? Uh, Aman, why don't you take that up? Cyberproof has its own uh, SOAR platform, uh, which is called CDC, Cyberproof Defense Center. Uh, it has, it's a mature product, which automates uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of workflows, both from detection and response point of view. It incorporates all the external sources, internal sources, use cases, playbooks, everything. Uh, the thing is, 
uh, Cyberproof uh, actually bundles the services along with the product and uh, give it to a customer. How we integrate with Sentinel? In fact, uh, last year we won an award because uh, Cyberproof was the first company who was able to integrate with Sentinel and successfully able to deploy across the globe for a few customers uh, to start with. So uh, Cyberproof has the required capability. Uh, you can say the skill set uh, and the team that are used to uh, design, define, and maybe implement uh, Microsoft Sentinel and integrate it with CDC. Plus, we have a very strong relation uh, with Microsoft team working together hand in hand. So whenever, like for example, if I am stuck anywhere, I will just raise my hand or directly call Iftekar or Terence and say, okay, I need support. And maybe, for example, uh, Sentinel has this machine learning capability that they are introduced. Now they are introducing anomaly detection. They have ATP coming along, uh, which does a lot of EDR activities, which are new and which I am also learning. So whenever it's required, I just reach out to the Microsoft team. So it, it, it gives, they come and they help us out with the customer. Plus I also get a chance to learn. Yeah. Great. Uh, there's another interesting question. So how does uh, Cyberproof overcome the problem of alert fatigue and alert overload that uh, you mentioned, Aman, in your yeah. earlier presentation? How does it overcome? Yeah, so uh, quickly summarizing that part, uh, because you automate a lot of activities uh, in the detection. So see, one is collection, then you investigate the alerts. That is, uh, you need information so that you can judge the alert, it is negative or positive, and then you are able to detect that it is a negative alert and then respond accordingly. So if you can automate 90% of this process, the analyst's life becomes way, way, way much simpler and the stress level goes down. They are able to add value, contribute in the decision making and they also uh, get a chance to learn and work on new technologies, work on focused investigations. Great, Thank, thanks, Aman. So, uh... Microsoft team, Terence, if the car, uh, there is a question on uh, Sentinel uh, pricing and licensing. Can, can you quickly run through what, how does the licensing work for Sentinel? Uh, sure, sure. I, mean, I think that's a very interesting question because when we traditionally looked at SIM, uh, you know, licensing and pricing models, right, we all know that they were based on uh, EPS. And uh, one of the challenges with that is that a client usually would have to size it for peak load, but end up only utilizing 30% uh, of the actual service infrastructure license. So you normally end up spending three times more than what you utilize, and that used to become like an overhead. Uh, however, with Sentinel, it's it's like a service, right? It's software as a service, or you know, as we call it. So you actually only pay for what you use. Uh, you know, it's a daily uh, consumption-based service ba based on the amount of logs that one uploads to the platform. Uh, you, you kind of analyze that data and you're billed for that. So there are different, uh, of course, um, slabs there. You have something as pay as you go, or you can do a minimum capacity commit a reservation to get better volume discounts. But it's, you know, you don't really need to go and invest in huge infrastructure or size for peak. You can just, you know, pay for what you actually use, right? That's one way of looking at it. In, uh, so it's predominantly based on how much data you upload on a daily basis. That's the that's the beauty of this service. Great, uh, thanks, thanks, Terence. So uh, one last question uh, before we call it a day: uh, Is is it possible to integrate store uh, to multiple SIEM tools? Yeah, uh, I will take that one. So uh, one of the client, uh, it's an automobile client. So when we work uh, on a global level, so uh, there might be a scenario, for example, the US guys were using a different SIM and uh, the Indian team was using a different SIM and the headquarters in the Europe was using a different SIM. So in U uh, sorry, in Europe. So in Europe, where the headquarter was based, we deployed Sentinel who sat over the entire thing and everything came into the store. If required, everything can independently also come to the store but then it depends on uh, the scenario and what decision the company wants to make, how they want to track it. But yes, you can integrate everything, uh, multiple SIMs, maybe multiple security tools along with SIM inside the SOAR. Great. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Aman. So that's, that's all about we have for the time today. 
Uh, many, many thanks to the Microsoft team, Darren, uh, Iftikar, uh, Aman, uh, for your insights. That, that was great. Right? And to all the participants for joining us today, we look forward to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Uh, have a wonderful day and please stay safe. Thanks. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.